with Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you my art journal page for the Pick a Stick Challenge for September. That is my group over on Facebook with my three friends where we give you 10 prompts to do on an art journal page picked by sticks. We have a huge amount of sticks with all different prompts and we pick them out and then you do them in the order that they were picked. So this is my take on it and be sure to watch Peg's, Lizzie Beth's, and Sherry's as well, which will all be linked below in the description box. So that first step I just whizzed through was to use a color that you never use. I don't use orange very often. It's not really a favorite color of mine. So I put that on there uh, using some Dilutions paint and a baby wipe. And then the next step was to use a non-tool. That would be anything that's not a paintbrush or something that you normally use um, as a tool. This is a, a cozy thing that came from a, a uh, hot beverage thing that I just ripped off because I thought it had an interesting texture. So I used that with some white gesso. The next step is to add acrylic paint using your fingers. Now I had made a little drawing of kind of a sketch out of what my page was going to be beforehand. And um, yeah, a lot of that ends up getting covered up, but it did, did give me an idea of where everything goes. And so I used some silver paint with my finger to color in the, I think it's called a cloche, a, a food covering thing. And then I added some shadows around the edges using some quinacridone gold. All got covered up, but anyway. <laughs> the next thing was to add waffle paper. Now I, I don't know what waffle paper is, but I assume that it is some sort of textured paper. So I used my um, embossing folders and my big shot die cutting thing that presses down the paper. I was trying to make something that looks like a butcher block table. So I used some tan cardstock through that and like embossed some lines onto it. And I thought that worked pretty good. I stuck it down with Liquitex matte gel. And then the next step was to remove color through a stencil. So I thought maybe I could make it look even more like a wood grain if I use this little stencil that has some patterns and I put some darker paints on there and then removed some of that paint through the stencil. And I, I think it looks pretty good. It doesn't look exactly like butcher block, but you know, it gives the idea of it. So it works out fine. The next thing was to collage printed tissue paper or wrapping paper. This is a piece of tissue paper that I put through my printer by taping it to a regular piece and printed on it is all the names of all the judges from the Chopped show. You guys might have figured out maybe by now that this page is about Chopped. And I had planned to do this type of a project. I had this idea in my head when the Creative Arts Collaboration had their hashtag event this month and I just didn't get it done. I had too many things to do. Um, if you guys want to watch that, it's uh, I think it's hashtag CAC fan art. Fan art being art that is inspired by something that you're a fan of. So I'm a fan of Chopped, so I was going to make this for that event, but then didn't get it done. So I decided to try to fit it in <laughs> with the prompts, which actually worked out fine. Um, rather than just going random with the prompts and just doing whatever, I decided to try to make this page that I had wanted to make earlier in the month. So the next thing to do was to, um, I collaged on that, that uh, wrapping paper, I mean printed tissue paper, and it b basically covered up my entire background that I'd spent all that time working on. But hey, I did the steps. They're still there. They're just not as visible anymore. They're just a layer. So the next thing was to cut out words or phrases from a printed source. And I printed out the chopped logo from on the internet and cut that out and put it on. Then the next step, oh yeah, we haven't got to the next step. Now I'm starting to do some finishing stuff. The next step is to use something from the opposite season. And so I needed to do these things before I did the opposite season thing which is I'm going to use something from summer, which is from a stamp set that's a summer stamp set that has 
um, a barbecue grill and lounge chairs and the sunshine, things like that. Um, it has this little crabs and I thought that they perhaps were cooking crabs on Chopped for this particular episode. And so I'm adding some crabs, which are from the opposite season of fall. I think fall is summer is the opposite. So I think <laughs> that's my theory anyway. So I made a couple little plates and I was sponging around the edges to give them a little bit more dimension. I did, had made three because there's three judges, but it wouldn't fit also with the cloche with the Ted over there holding the, you know, getting ready to lift it up to show you who's been chopped. So I put my two plates on and then now I'm adding some sauce. There was obviously something green in the basket. So one person made a sauce out of it to make one of those sauce swoops. And then the other person made it into a salad, probably with a vinaigrette, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> and then I just fussy cut, cut out my crabs and I put two of them on one plate and then one of them on another plate. So that's what the main course was, was some uh, crabs. And the other judge was uh, on the other side and he already put his plate away, I guess. Okay, so the next step, hmm, what is the next step? Oh yeah, um, um, before I did that, when, when I printed this tissue paper through my printer, it got kind of jammed up and some of the black ink smeared onto the paper a little bit and I didn't want to print it again because it's just going to get jammed up again. I had to pull it out of there. Um, I didn't tape it well enough, I guess, or something. So I'm just using a little bit of white gesso to cover up those inky splotches to make it look a little bit better before I do the next step, which is to use black gesso or paint to cover something up. And if you guys watch Chopped, you will n notice if you look at the set that they're kind of, they've kind of got an Asian thing going on with those screens. And um, that's the reason that I put the tissue paper over the background because I was thinking it was kind of like that rice paper on those screen things. So now I'm using the black gesso to cover up areas to make the frames of those screen things. I, I'm not sure, ex I want to say they're called shoto screens or something. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. In, in Japanese architecture, they divide the rooms with those big screens and the chop set has a lot of that type of a vibe going on. So I'm just using the masking tape to mask off areas and then to fill them in in between to make the screens. So there you go. So now I need some contestants for my chopped show. And so I'm sketching them onto another piece of mixed media paper. I didn't mention at the beginning that this book that I'm using has Canson mixed media and paper in it. And I've been ripping it out of the book <laughs> and using it for all my pick a stick challenges and my um, mission inspiration pages and then I've been I'm going to ring bind the whole thing when the entire year of those two challenges ends I'm going to ring bind it into a book for the whole year so that is my plan so I just ripped out another piece of paper from the book and I'm drawing with my soft graphite pencil and drawing f a few little characters and then I'm cutting them out and placing them onto the page. I, I didn't want to draw them right onto the page because they had those big black stripes and just you know too much stuff so I decided to collage them on so I'm drawing them and then cutting them out. <clears throat> I probably should have put the black illustration marker on it before I cut them out that would have been logical except the next step, step 10, is to add black marker. <laughs> so I put them onto the page, glued them down, and then added the black marker. Because, yeah, trying to get my idea to fit into um, the steps for this month. Not as easy as you would think. I also drew Ted's arm and hand, and I'm going to attach that as well. Um, he's about ready to lift it up, to lift up the cloche to show the person who's been chopped in the entree round. Because there's three of them. If there was four, it would have been the appetizer round. But I don't think they would have given them little crabs for the appetizer round. So that the entree round makes more sense. 
So after I've um, drawn everything, trimmed them out, trimmed their legs off so that it looks as if they're standing in front of the table, you know, you won't, don't see their, their legs and feet, then I'm going to attach them using the um, Liquitex matte gel. I'm trying not to get the matte gel on the top parts but just to put it on the back as if it's glue because I know that when I go to color if I use a water soluble medium which I do plan to that I will have problems going over that matte medium because it seals everything in so the solution might have been to completely make my characters on a separate piece of paper color them put the black marker on the whole thing on t and then cut them out and then put them on the page which is what I would have done had we not had this step 10 add black marker or pin. So you see where I'm going there? I'm making my process fit in to the steps instead of just doing the steps. Normally the steps are to inspire you to you know think of something outside of the box but in this case I'm forcing the steps to behave and I'm forcing them <laughs> to go with the idea that I wanted to do so that's a little bit backwards but it is certainly possible and it, I, it worked out fine I, I did everything that I wanted to do on this page that I had planned to do earlier using the steps so that proves that they their steps are not completely crazy even though sometimes we think they are so to color my characters, I'm using Inktense pencils, which are a water-soluble pencil that um, once has been activated and let to dry, it's then permanent. I'm also using a few of the Neocolor 2 crayons because I need the skin tones. Uh, my my uh, Inktense pencils don't really have a lot of skin tones, so I'm using a few of my Neocolors. I've also got some white acrylic paint and I'm dipping my brush into that and it helps me blend whatever water soluble medium that I'm using and also makes it um, sealed after the fact. So, And also I can do highlights with it a little bit. So I tend, when I'm doing faces I tend to use the Neil colors and then the white acrylic paint and my water barrel brush which is a brush that has water in the barrel. <laughs> So I'm just coloring. Um, my people are very different characters. This girl that I'm coloring now, she's very sassy. And I think that she's probably going to win because she just has all kinds of attitude. She's got her little hand on her hip like, oh yeah, you think you're going to chop me? I don't know about that. I just think that I'm just the bomb. And she ends up having some very bright colored clothes and... Um, She's sassy. She's got asymmetrical hair. So I think I think she's got the lot, you know, a lot of potential to win. Then we've got the kind of nervous uh, girl that's uh, got her handkerchief on her head and she's kind of holding her hands in front of her like kind of like doing the, the thumb twiddle thing like, mm, oh no, I hope I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> And then we got the casual guy over on the end. He's balding. He's an older guy and he's been cooking for 25 years. And he's like, you know, whatever, whatever people. So he's just kind of standing casually with his hands behind his back. So the, the chef coats, um, I want them to be white because generally chef coats are white. Although I think on chopped, they're different colors depending on what they're doing. But, um, white isn't white like if you look at something that's white it's it's shades of gray really light shades of gray and bright highlights but it's it's uh, it's got a lot of shadows too so I used a blue pencil and blended it in to create the shadows so that the you know I couldn't just leave them plain white you know what I mean know what I mean yeah um, the casual dude, he's got jeans on. <laughs> he's like, I'm not even going to dress up for this. I'm just going to wear jeans. <laughs> and then uh, little Miss Sassy over here, she's got her red hair and everything. and um, She's going to have some crazy leggings on in a minute. Haven't got there yet. 
And then Ted's wearing his usual dark suit coat and light shirt underneath. He wears a tie as well, but you can't see him. And then, you know, you just see his hand. So, yeah. If you guys are enjoying this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment so I know that you were here. Subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss anything. And also um, share if you want to. If you know someone who's a chop Chopped fan on Facebook, you might want to tag them with this because they might think it's kind of funny. And um, those things, they help out my channel a lot because that tells YouTube that I'm making something valuable that someone likes and they might recommend it to someone else. So I'm very appreciative when you do that, and I try to answer everyone's comments. I get to them eventually. So there Miss Sassy has her crazy leggings on. <laughs> so now I'm um, using a, a Fabricastel Artist Pit Pen, a brush, in kind of an orange color, to add a shadow around my characters. This helps them blend into the background it makes it like it l looks less like they're just cut out and pasted on there which they are of course but it, it improves a lot so I recommend that people do that oftentimes I'll do this with like a dark gray or a or even a black Stabilo pencil but in this case with that kind of an orangey background that worked really well to just use the orange brush pen and then I have a gray one that I'm just kind of adding some shadows to the cloche and then brown around the plates. So then I just I just need to finish up their faces. Um, I haven't put their eyes in yet. <laughs> I got back out the extra small uh, Fabricastel pit pen, artist, artist bullet tip pen, to go back over the lines of the face. <clears throat> when I use the Neo Color 2s, they kind of obscure the lines as I'm you know putting blending them so I always go back over and add the black back in helps out a little bit so it's almost the end of the month I've been trying to plan what I'm gonna do in October and I'm just not sure <laughs> what are you guys gonna do in October There is one big long month challenge thing that I might do or I might not. I'm kind of iffy on it. It's called Inktober and it's where you make an ink drawing every day and post it. But I don't know if I'm going to do it yet or not. I don't like drawing in ink. I like drawing in pencil and then going over it in ink. So pencil makes me happier because I can, of course, you know, erase it if I have to. So once all my characters are complete, I'm just kind of doing some touch up. I brought that silver paint back out and silvered back up the the cloche because it was it was getting a little bit banged up. And then I'm putting a black line around the chop sign with my fine tip black Posca pen. And then uh, where I pulled the tape off off up at the top, it's very it, I, the tape didn't stick down well up there, and it um, looks messy. So I end up cleaning that up as well. And of course, I put on some words. If your dish doesn't cut it, you will be chopped. <laughs> so I hope all your dishes are cutting it, and I hope everyone's having a good fall. And I think that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.